this. I'll try, I mean, maybe I'll try to um, stay near the glare so you guys don't have to deal with it. And this is going to be a ramble because I don't even know if I can listen to this music as long as I am for, for a variety of reasons. One is I've never listened to it before. The DJ, though, um, oh, shit, I have to go and fix those forts. Probably just one over. Just that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ, you're like a uh, one of those um, Mexican jumping beans. Jeepers, jumping. Anyways. Um, what the hell is this? Yeah, music I'm not too sure about. Um, it's a genre I haven't listened to in quite some time. It's Deep House. Um, it's, I'm, I'm not very uh, lyric. Um, I don't like... They, they, have me, they have my head up, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I go off into Wonderland. Like, I just... Whatever. Um, right now. Boom, boom. Um, okay, focus, Chris. Focus. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to chit-chat, to be honest with you. Like, it's um, not a time to do a live stream or whatever. i, I got to get ready for sleep. Lots of stuff has been going on in this game. Lots of stuff has been going on this week. Lots of stuff has been going on. Um, okay, let's get over. Let's get over the work week stuff because I, I I think I mentioned uh, to people on the live stream on sat last Saturday uh, that I may not be doing a live stream this uh, weekend, uh, hosting our show, and um, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to do um, daily headlines in the uh the world war image of the day kind of oh my god just by the way on a side note i just have to uh let you guys know that um of course remember it's low res and they watermark the flip flipping image who cares it's free i signed up with critical past and uh they're allowing me to download um whatever clips they have i have to go through some rigmarole to get them but still I, I like, you know, I'm a, I've got them available. So that artillery barrage that I showed a little tiny bit last week, um, I've got it uh, stored on my computer. It's like, holy F. So I'm going to continue doing this. I'm just looking for ones. Now, they've, they've got tons. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to look for some that are essentially live stream appropriate, like they're not going to take forever, and are somewhat interesting. You know, if that makes any sense. I watched one with General Smuts um, reviewing his troops. It was just cool. There's somebody in the lineup, though. I just wanted to smuck him or smut him outside the head. Sorry. It was just like he wasn't even paying attention. Um, he was talking to somebody else. Uh, not Smuts, but I mean, not even like looking at the troops. I was like, you F. Um, whoever you are, you'd be fired. I don't care if you were like whatever. The most, bi no, I just was like. I just didn't like that attitude. No, no, no. Like, you've got to show some respect for the... It was amazing to see the uniform differences. That's all I got to say for the British troops in Germany, East Africa. And the sky's the limit. I, like, I saw videos and or access to videos. I watched a few others. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to talk to you and share with you guys about these things. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I've got a big gobbledygook here. There are a bunch of... Um, I'll, um, alpha, not just um, alphabetical uh, little beads. I was going to pop them on top of the camera. And you know what? The reality is um, it was a bit, I know the way my CDL would go. And which means I would start like trying to make sure the letters were perfect. So I was like, no, enough's enough. Look, the blue are the Russians. The pink are the Austro-Hungarians. The orange are the Germans. Um, and I'll keep mentioning that from video to video to video. Like I said, it's going to go all over the place. I'm trying to stay out of the, uh, keep the stuff out of the glare as well. So I put in the little yellow. Remember, I printed this map off at 105%, um, which is wonderful because it just fits these bingo chits perfectly. Um, so the yellow bingo chits are areas where uh, either uh, there cannot be a trenched entrenched position based on the situation that's going on as far as I can see oh what else can I tell you each uh, you can see here the core uh, 
yet again, I'm doing a sector uh, sector commander. I'm only going with one sector commander, commanders for the Germans. That's Ludendorff and, and uh, Hindenburg, obviously. Like I've said before, I popped in the fortress counters, um, but for the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians, um, Jesus H, do the Germans have a lot of fortresses? Were they ever scared to death of the Russians, as far as I'm concerned? Um, they're there, but uh, there's nobody home, kind of thing. The lights are not on. Popped in the railheads. Everybody, I know where the railheads are. I know everybody's forces now. I, I was shocked. I'm going to say this before I don't. These are going to things I'm going to be repeating over and over again, I can guarantee you. Um, so the Russians are, I think, are in amazing shape due to the fact that they, like I said, they're able to pull an entire army into another front. The Germans freaked out. Uh, when I took a look at um, their, the length of their front and the amount of strength points they have on the board, and they know full well what the hell's happened. They can read the newspaper just like anybody else. The Ottomans and the... Um, uh, the Turks and the Russians have signed a non-aggression pact and uh, they can see the boat, they can see the, the smoke coming from the boats, you know, taking the troops across. The trains are humming. Anything that's bringing troops from the Caucasus towards here is happening. Not all of it's going to happen at once, but the Germans know full flipping well what's happening. So, and I saw the strength points sitting for the Germans and I went, there's no way in, and remember, there's no ring. Everything's geared towards the Western Front. They're so Western Front focused, it is mind boggling. And I was like, um, we got to do something here, man. This is almost like a repeat of September uh, 1914 because I ended up uh, dedicating, and I it's been incorporated into the army list of what's going to happen. Um, I'm bringing over 20 uh, infantry divisions, 112 strength points, I do believe. So I've got to take that away from the Western Front, either in forms of reinforcements or what's there right now. The French are probably just like jumping up and down happy. And it's also obviously going to have dramatic impact on my, like it's going to change my plans I'm still going to monstrously focus for the Germans to try to take all of Belgium. I've said this before and I'll say this again. You have to get all the effing uh, channel ports. You have to take all of Belgium. This is BS and you have to stop um, getting the British uh, free range, free reign across the channel. Enough of this crap. That's the way. What the hell do you think the Russians are doing with Memel here? Trying to take memo for the same thing, the exact same thing. All right. Ooh, I just felt a bit prickly. Okay, let's go off. I don't know how long this video is going to go. I met my neighbors kind of a, for a second time, a little bit better this time. Uh, they were having a bitch of a time uh, mowing their front lawn. I don't want to be too loud, just in case they're here in the backyard. So I'll try to talk quietly near the speaker. So, um, we were having a bitch of a time, but my nosy neighbor, two houses away, so God bless him, um, went over with his gas-powered mower and just went berserk on their front lawn. And um, I offered as an olive branch, or like, hello, um, my weed whacker, which I never use, <laughs> or I haven't used in ages, and some spare uh, nylon thread or whatever the hell that crap is. And I said, here, man, I'm just going to put it on the side of my house, and you can do whatever, that, like, take it, leave it. Don't do anything with it. And I threw him some lawn bags because I noticed he was having some issues. But he's super duper, super young. And he just seems so like quiet and whatever. I'm like, oh my God, I just may have dream, like just have a neighbors of the dream come true. Like I'm probably even more shy than they are. Like he was like talking. He was like, oh, I like your cactus because you know, I've got the, I got Porthos in the front yard to try to get as much sun. I was like, cool. I gave a little tiddly bit chat. But I was like, I just want to get back and slap on some music and watch um well i did i should say slap on it obviously music after i was watching the last dad versus son uh video which is odd because like i said i'm not into world war ii not into all that crazy nonsense or whatever but is it yeah it is and um i just yeah he said like he's a good storyteller is what it comes down to and um that person could like uh tell a story about whatever and i'd still be like 
I'd be like, wow, like you could read out a grocery list uh, or a grocery receipt and I'd be like, whoa, that is so cool. Some people got it, some people don't, man. All right, and he's got it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like I said, I'm trying to stay out of the uh, glare. So shockingly enough, like I said before, I can't believe I know what everybody's ha having for breakfast, I guess, if you want to call it that. I haven't figured out uh, the major objectives for everyone. I'm, what I'm trying to do is bring, uh, same as what I'm trying to get into the grand campaign, uh, other stuff for focus points and so on and so forth. I'll talk about that on, on another side another side thing. I'm trying to go big with my aperture, like for topics and then shrink them down. You know what I mean? Like, and go from there. Um, what else can I tell you? Shoot, jeepers jumping, probably tons. Um, hmm, what else? There was something about, no, maybe it'll come to it. I'll come to it. So the Austro-Hungarians and Germans have well, they've come to an understanding. That's what I'm calling it. Remember, the original, uh, the first one was the Katowice Conference Agreement, sharing of troops, resources, all kinds of crazy nonsense. So now this is a, I'm calling it the Car, uh, the Tarnif understanding. And this uh, little cube here is just a representation of where the coordination is going to happen. So look what the Austro-Hungarians got to do. What a sweet deal. So they've reduced their um, front by tw uh, 40 kilometers and they get 20 strength points worth of German troops. Um, they're all going to be brigades, but that's 10 hexes. Um, the Austro-Hungarians get to pop uh, somewhere across here and cause some um, retreat resistance. Awesome. Now here's what they give up. They gave up three uh, engineering regiments, which have, which have been, anyways, they've been trained in the German way. It was never, they weren't probably, oh, I found another, G, uh, what am I saying? I'm still thinking about putting all this stupid little alphabet things on there. I just noticed the G over there. I was like, whoo, I was running out of Gs, that's why. So here's the uh, 40 kilometers they're giving up. That's why I put little red cubes on, so maybe it'll help you see them. Now here's the kicker. Um, the Germans have exclusive use of this, of these rail lines, exclusive use. Now they have to fight this front and they're not, you know, remember, this is not Austria, Hungary proper. You know what I mean? This is, this is Poland. If you want to call it that, it's just like a, they're controlling it. Maybe like a buffer zone. I don't think, so that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, it's not like end of the world that uh, Germans are running roughshod all over here. No, 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 no. We get the place 10, like I said, 10 hexes worth of... Uh, so the main Austro-Hungarian uh, things are obviously are going to be to try to take T uh, Stanislaw and uh, Cernovitz back. And the rest of it, we're just going to just stay nice and pretty, look for opportunities. If they happen, they happen. If they don't, they don't. All right, what are we going to do now that the... Um, the Austro-Hungarians gave us this sweetheart uh, rail area because oh, we're so far away. What the hell? Now we're not. Um, so obviously we're going to try to take Kielce and Radom and secure Wuj as much as possible. I clued in now that um, also because um, they're going into the Grand Campaign, I have to start dealing with garrison troops. So as a firm what I can see, the only people that have to deal with garrison troops at this moment in time, well, this is the way I'm playing it out. If you look at the rules in the garrison, it's for garrison troops. It says you need to pop them there. It doesn't mean, and it's, you can only use troops for other things if they're in the front line. Uh, so I have to put troops, so if I have somebody in here and I, have to, I always have to make sure I've got certain troops in here. Um, I think I need, because it's a Russian Poland or whatever, um, it's had. Uh, the garrison um, requirements are less. Normally you would need two infantry uh, strength points or one cavalry strength point per personnel center or uh, for each urban hex side. Um, it's quite a bit, but it gets halved for uh, these guys. Look, let's be honest. 
The Russians are going to obviously keep people in Cernovitz and in Stanislaw. That being said, it doesn't mean that, um, like I have to, like I always, I've got to keep that focus is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, the Germans are the worst. They've got Cernovitz, I got to pop in. Um, and that's the other thing. They said have, so you can like pick two spots and like have, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not going to pick like, they're so disparate. No, we're going to do something like um, within column movement or rail movement. Um, if you can get to with them within one turn, all right. Otherwise, screw you. I'm not getting into that crap. So if I can cut off your whatever, it'll cause uh, a garrison issue with the zone of control, as far as I'm concerned. So I think they, they'll need four, maybe five, uh, uh, six, sorry, six strength points. I think there's four, so that's two, so out three. Yeah, we'll round up always. So we got three they'll have to deal with, they'll have to put in. Oh, jeepers jumping, what else can they say? Um, so, one sector control uh, command, four armies, two cores per army. One sector command, hold on here, eight. How many armies they got? Hold on, let me check. Four armies, 12 cores. Russia has... Ten armies, sixteen cores, so we're four cores short, and we have a three-sector um, world here. Just due to the fact, I don't know if it's going to bite them in the ass for micromanagement later. I don't know. So we got northern uh, sector, central sector, which is the main guy with uh, Yuri Danilov. I haven't figured out who's going to be the north and south yet, and then we have the southern sector. So south will be di uh, controlling uh, eight and third which are going to make a drive towards, uh, well, they want to get around here. It's, it's three. That's the ultimate objective. Give me a break. But, you know, we got to do what we got to do. Uh, and these guys, he'll ch um, be doing, you know, all of this area. And then this guy will be in control of, or coordinating, basically. So, you know, try, I'm trying to speed up stuff as much as, quick, as much as I can. Messages and everything else. Oh, I can't wait to get into focus points. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning of the, uh, the video. I'm trying to get bit, yeah, I did aperture and stuff, I think. Um, yeah, he'll do first and seventh. I can't remember who else is it. So we got through, it doesn't matter um, for now. So, yep, what else? I figured out garrisons now. Um, I know what armies are there. I gotta start looking at the other fronts. I have to start integrating things. I can see the pieces fitting. And I still have to backtrack a bit, mind you, tomorrow afternoon. Oh, I've been waiting for this. It's, um, a, cre it's a, sh um, thing called Scrapyard. So it's not just going to be writing, creative writing, but it's going to be a combination of how are you using creative writing with other artistic, I uh, went, excuse me, excuse me. Sweet jeepers jumping mother. <laughs> An hour and a half, I get to hang out with other people talking about how they're going to, I'm like, I've been, I'll be talking about packing tape and a laser printer and making a film roll. Basically that's what, that'll, that'll be what I'm gonna be working on tomorrow. I'll be, um, I don't have a laser printer, but, um, I can work out the mechanics. I can pretend I have a laser printer. How is that possible? Because I don't have, I'm not gonna use a light bulb right now. I just, like I said, I'm gonna do the mechanics. I'm gonna get some packing tape out and start figuring out the scales that I need to print uh, certain images out. Because I wanna make my own film reel, like I've mentioned before. Then I'll just, you know, pop a uh, flashlight on and then beam it along the, against the wall and film it. And I can make my own bloody World War One films, you know, kind of thing. So why not? And I want to do this type of stuff. All right. I think this is enough. And the music's kicking nice. Like 
Very nice. Like, um, yeah, I'd like to go and trip out to this. I'll stare at this. Um, well, let's take another quickie look. See if I see anything. Yeah, like I obviously the guy can't entrench there. It's on a, like a tiny little spot. It's called the spit, for God's sakes. So we have little, you know, little areas here. But I mean, the Russians as if they give it enough. There's fortresses left, right, and center there. God, this could be so weird to see what happens. Could be a lot of stuff on the board, man. Both sides figure it out, but. I want this to, you know, model, like I said, just stay in plausibility land. I think it may break down for me when we get down into the, um, the mechanisms of how I'm doing things, but I think the, the story, the narrative will be plausible. It's unfortunate. It'll, that'll become, that'll come down to, you know, just uh, poor game design again. Not him, I mean me. <laughs> I should say poor um, um, game morphing design, I guess, if you want. Yeah, the music's nice. It's weird, I've been listening to um, such high tempo stuff lately. So it's, um, it's almost like getting um, like a cat brush. All right, that's about it, I think. I'll just go and do my stuff. Yeah, it's so nice to know that we're getting into autumn soon. And go upstairs more often. Do some other stuff. However, oh yeah, I need to get some fishing line. I bring the planes, put them around here. No. Okie doke. Yeah, the music's too good. Need the trip. Hope you're having a good one. See ya.